Welcome back to the channel guys, my name's Gareth, this is Tech Check. This week we're going to do a bit more of a bloggy style build. I've got an hour on my lunch break, I thought what's better, let's build a PC. You all know this case, if you don't, it's in this top left hand corner here. It's the C1 from uh, actual Game Max, it's their brew and case. Really enjoyed that case guys, and there is a step by step build in it if you're interested. What we're going to actually do is we're just going to build a pure gaming PC. So we've got an 11400F, we've got this RTX 3060 Ti, we've got a plethora of uh, different M.2s or NVMe drives here and I'll walk through those a little later. We're going to be looking at these new T30 fans from Fantex. We're perhaps going to do a push-pull in the front of this case because it don't support 240s or 360s at the top. We're going to use this Glacier 1240T30 all-in-one and then we've got this really nice Z590 MSI Gaming Force motherboard which looks really, really good. We've got a 600 watt power supply, we've got a couple of additional blacked fans and then we've got some nice blacked cable extensions as well. Stick with me, let's do this. So like every time guys, clear off everything that you're not going to need. We need our CPU, our NVMEs, our RAM and our motherboard to begin with. And like we said previously guys, this Z590 uh, MSI Gaming Force motherboard is quite a looker. So it's got everything that you're gonna require. It is obviously DDR4, it supports Gen 4 on the top M.2, and then we have got a number of other M.2 slots on here as well. We've got our Time 16 slot, and we can put up to 128 gigs worth of RAM in here if you wanted to. We're not gonna do that, we're actually gonna put 32 gigs worth in here, we need it in slots A2 and B2. But we've also got our DFIG uh, code up here. We've got plenty of RGB and fan controllers. We've got our USB 3.2 Gen C, our USB 3, and we've also got dual 8-pin connections as well. On the back, we've also got USB-C, 2.5 gig LAN, USB 3, and obviously our display and a HDMI port as well. More importantly, our BIOS flashback button as well. So. Overall, a really nice looking board. What we're going to do is we're going to chuck in our CPU, our NVMEs and our RAM, get this motherboard up to speed and then we're going to get into that Brew and C1 case. Let's do it. So our CPU guys is the 11400F, really nice gaming CPU here. What we're going to do is just open up our retention arm. We are going to match the triangle with the triangle that's on the socket down here. Gently lower that into place, and then we can lower it back down and lock it down. In terms of RAM, I lied before, I thought it was 32 gigs. It's actually two 32 gigs, so we've got 3,600 mega transfers per second, and we've got 64 gigs in total. This is Corsair Vengeance Pro, so we're going to get some nice RGB. Not that we were actually looking at RGB, because majority of this build is going to be blacked out anyway. Firm push until you hear them clicks. And we'll do the exact same for B2. So that's our RAM and CPU nicely in place. We'll now put our Gen 4 drive on the top. Remembering when we put this back, we need to remove this sleeve and film. So here we have our one terabyte NVMe drive, guys. We're gonna install this on the top M.2 slot. This is from Kioxia and it's a one terabyte drive. Put it at a 20 degree angle and slide it into position. You'll see then that nicely sits on top of this standoff. We take the world's tiniest little screw and we can secure it in place. We can then take off this film and put this back, securing it in place with the two screws. And we can do the exact same thing, guys, with our Gen 3 drive that we're gonna put on the bottom slot. And there we have it, guys, our two M.2s installed, our 64 gigs worth of Corsair Vengeance Pro installed, and our 11400 installed onto this Z590. Good chance now, guys, just to peel off all the plastics so you don't forget them when we get it into the case. You've got a little bit more room to maneuver here, here as well. So. Let's get this motherboard installed into that C1 brew and case from Game Max. If I've not mentioned it already, all the parts in this build are going to be listed down below in the description as well. So as I mentioned guys, we did actually do a build in this uh, particular case last week. 
950 pound build so if you've not seen that go and check that out guys really really good value build good performing build as well going to do something slightly different and i've already prepared slightly this case as well so what we've got is we've got three of these fantex 230 fans at the front we've then got the 240 glacier uh, all in one and then we've got it in a push pull we have two more fans on the back pulling uh, the actual air through that radiator as well that's obviously on this all-in-one pump and that's going to connect to our cpu keeping that 11400 well mega 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 cool because this is slightly overkill but we actually had a surplus of these t30 uh, fans and due to the fact that you can't put an all-in-one at the top of the case we just thought we'd try it out just to see how it would look well all in there as well so would i advise doing this uh on this kind of build not really not with an 11 400 and especially unless you've got something like a 12 900 or a 12 700 or a 13 700 and plus it's not really worth it the fantex glaciers are really good cool as it is so you don't need to go overkill with push pull but what we're going to do is going to get this installed into here but just to give you an overview this is how these fans look at the front and they do look really really good these fantax t30s are top of the line guys not only prefer performance but they've gone do you know what rgb no we don't want none we just want it to perform so i think in my opinion they look really really nice without any rgb this subtle more camo color and they look really good now, when you're installing your motherboards, make sure if it's not got an integrated IO shield, you go ahead and place that into the case now. On this Z590, it's already got it installed, so we can carefully lower it down onto the nine standoffs and make sure that it's in the correct position. We can then go ahead, guys, and install the nine screws, the ones with these heads on to make good contact with the grounding pins. It's also a good idea, guys, to have a magnetic screwdriver. It means that you can get into these ones right at the back and make it really, really easy, especially if you drop one as well. Now we've got all nine screws holding the motherboard firmly in place, guys. We can go ahead and connect our all-in-one pump to our CPU. So first thing we're going to do, guys, just to get this cable out of the way, we want to attach our CPU connection. So up the top here, we've got CPU fan and pump fan. We want to make sure it's on our CPU just so that we don't get any errors when we're actually booting into uh, the BIOS. We can take off our cover. And as you can see, we've already got some pre-applied thermal paste. What we're going to do is we are going to just put this onto the four pillars that I've nicely installed like so and then we've got four little nuts which we're going to screw it down with once you've got all four on guys just in a rotating pattern go around until they're thumb tight and that should be absolutely fine we can then take the case or the cover that goes over the top of this fantex glacier and what we're going to do guys is we're going to push this through to the back of the case and we'll nicely cable manage these so the cables aren't inside Next up guys is the case fans. We want them as an exhaust. So we're simply gonna make sure that we are looking at the fan from inside of the case, four screws from outside of the case, and then we can run the actual four pin connectors onto the motherboard when we come to connect everything else. Good idea here guys is not to do these too tight to begin with. I haven't actually spoke about my attire, have I? Not normally dressed in a jumper and shirt. Look a bit posh for building a computer, but we, on lunch at the minute and I thought what's better than spending my lunch building a gaming PC so just to give you an idea of what uh, these Fantec fans look like guys we're actually going to put another one at the back as an exhaust so this is the Fantex T30 the ultimate fan and to be fair guys other than Naktua these are kind of the best that you can get on the market at the minute as I've said guys these look absolutely stunning for fans that do not offer any RGB, they tend to be a little bit thicker. They've got these amazing rubber grommets. They've got a really nice aesthetic. The cable's nicely rooted. They can be daisy chained as well. 
so you can get rid of all that cable clutter and just oh, I it, personal opinion this is I think they look really really nice so same as we've done for the top two guys make sure that we are exhausting air so we want to be making sure that we're looking at the actual fan we also want to be making sure that the daisy chain comes off at the back so you can feed it through and then you can slot it into place and use the four screws to keep it there so as you can see it's currently a little bit messy uh, due to the fact that we've got all these cables and that's the beauty about obviously cable management guys you can take as much as or as little time as you really really like so what i'm planning on doing here is we're going to push all of these cables into the back we're then going to daisy chain them all together so we're using minimal connections in terms of pwm connections to our motherboard and less cables on show so just for a quick update guys we've just attached our 24 pin dead dead straightforward we haven't put in the power supply yet but we have pushed in the 24 pin and i'm pushing that round what we're also going to do is connect our eps power cable now on this motherboard it's got two eight pins because we've got an 11 400 we are only going to be connecting one eight pin so just make sure that you've got it orientated the correct way and another good option is feeding this through the hole before you actually connect it as well so we'll run through just a quick update guys in terms of connections here okay and i'll break it down as quickly as possible so we have our rgb connection from our fantex uh, pump which is here so this is to provide rgb and we've just run it into our argb5 connection on our hub so that's that one we've then connected to our rear fan a fan extension cable and we've just run that through to the front of the case and connected it onto a system fan header we've then got our second and third fan which is up top here and we're just powering that because they're three pin um 12 volt dc fans off of fan four and fan five We've then got a PWM fan connection, four pin from our hub, which needs going through to the front of our case. And again, connecting to a system fan header. And then the three fans at the front are all daisy chained together and they're gonna be connected to a system fan header. And then the two fans that are in a pull configuration at the front of the case as well are also going to be daisy chained together and put onto a system fan header as well. What we'll do now is we'll push all of the IO through to the front of the case and we'll get that connected as well. So we're gonna fly through these connections guys. 24 pin which is here, our eight pin EPS CPU power cable which is here. The next one is our HD audio. That goes on down there. We've then got our USB 2. We've then got our PWM connection for our fan hub. And finally, our USB 3. There you go. Cool. And then we can pull all the excess cables through to the back as well and tidy it all up, yeah? Oh, he's peeling. Yeah. Pe go on, peel it. Yeah. <laughs> Last step, guys, is our graphics card and power supply. So let's get them in. You can help me if you want. You can do the honors. There you go. So we'll just higher up our cable a little bit. We line it up. And then we're looking for a firm push. We in? Nice. And then we can lock it back into position with that screw, yeah? So what Daniel did there is we've already connected uh, our eight pin PCIe cable. We just lined it up to the PCIe slot and then a firm push, get that confirmation click and you're good to go. We're gonna push this eight pin through to the back of the case guys. We've got a few other um, power reset cables that we just need to connect down here. I'm gonna put in the power supply and then we've got test boot. Thank God it's too late, Alts. Daniel would be having me put two fans at the bottom here and he'd have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He'd have 10 fans in this little uh, C1 case, which is totally overkill guys. Don't do it. So what we're going to do is just going to fly through these uh, front panel connectors, guys. As we always say, they're all marked up. Look on the back, look for the positive and the negative and also the little marked triangles as well. I'm not going to walk through this. Check your motherboard manual. If you don't uh, look for that, look for JFP1 layout for the actual motherboard on Google. It will give you a blown up version of where to connect these. But 99% of the time, they're always the same. Right, there we are, front I.O. 
all installed. So last stage guys is the power supply and you wouldn't really do your power supply last just we're arse about titting it and we're we've only got 20 minutes left before we've actually got to knock off for, for dinner so let me grab this power supply let's get this installed and then we're near enough there fan always down guys tight just how we like it so as we said guys just four screws holding this firmly in place let's connect the big boys together so we've got our 24 pin we've got our pcie cable for our graphics card we need sata power for our drive here or our fan hub here and then connect to our cpu There we go. All in all guys, now it's just a case of we've run our EPS down here. We've got all our front IO down here, plus our front connections, which is here. We've got a 24 pin, which I'll boot down last. But essentially what we're gonna do is just use a series of zip ties just to clean this up here. We've got a solid back panel, so everything should be absolutely fine. This is the point, yeah, where we actually go, uh, it's not going to work or oh, everything's absolutely fine so let's put some power into this monitor and let's press the power button up here once we turn it on well there's power to the power supply <laughs> either this motherboard's dead or this power supply is dead Not many times does this happen, guys. And essentially, in all openness, we've just tried to obviously boot this. And, well, because we didn't test any of the components on receipt, unfortunately, we've got a bad or dead power supply that's in here. So this 600 watt power supply is not working. So just because uh, I wanted just to test out, is it the power supply or the, is it the motherboard? I've just chucked up another 700 watt um, PSU, connected the 24 pin and eight pin EPS. And you can hear these fans really ramping up now, um, just to make sure that it was the power supply, not the motherboard essentially. And hurrah, there we go. So looks like we're gonna have to order a new power supply and then we'll have to revisit this video and get that final test boot once we actually receive it. So we're about three days later, guys. Kudos to CCL Online for coming up clutch two days uh, for getting this Aorus P750W out to us, which is really, really good. Um, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. So all we're gonna do is chuck in this 750 watt brand new power supply, connect up to these extensions. As you saw in the last video, we chucked in an old 750 uh, power supply, EPS and 24 pin, just to make sure it was the actual PSU here. And I don't know what's the matter with this 650 FSP non-modular power supply. It's just giving up the goods. So we'll get this one installed and I'll be back very shortly. And then we'll push it through to the boot stage. So we've finally reached that pivotal part, guys. The power supply is now installed and we pray that everything works. So flick of the power, we'll turn on the monitor and then we'll press the power button. Come on, please. Oh, thank the Lord. Now, what I have done, guys, is I've got an M.2 in here that already had windows on from a previous build. So hopefully, it'll either go through to the BIOS or straight through to Windows, which I think it's gonna go through to Windows. Now, you will hear these T30 fans spinning right up because we haven't set any fan curves we haven't enabled xmp or anything like that so that's a really really nice sight to see so the end to a little bit of a saga and well i'm glad it happened really because it hasn't happened to me in a long long time so i'll just flick this off and then we'll do some glamour shots at the end so i'll give you a close-up and you guys can have a quick look at it in a little bit of a slow-mo and around about 360 of it. So 
yeah, going back to what I was previously saying, it's not happened to me in such a long time. And that much saying that I didn't even test a lot of the parts that come in now. I just presume that they're going to win and, well, I'm going to win and that everything will actually work. So generally what I normally do is I'll just set up a test bench scenario. I'll plug in the GPU, the CPU, the RAM, 24 pin, 8 pin and I'll power it on just to make sure that we get through and everything's working. But for the last 12 months or so, around about 80, 90 builds, no issues, no problems. So when I hit that power button and nothing worked, I was like, oh my God, what a bloody nightmare. So just for you guys, if that was the case, then obviously if you've got an external power supply or an alternate power supply, shall I say, always try that. And then it's a process of elimination, one thing at a time until you can rule down to that's the exact part that's the problem. So in this case, it was really, really quick. I had a power supply, quickly plugged it in, and then we figured out that, hey, presto, we've got a bad power supply. But hey, never mind, CCL came in clutch, sending out that 750, and we've got no problems at all. So guys, hope you enjoyed. It's been over two days because I did build this in my lunch break, and then all of a sudden we had that issue. So. I'm hoping you've enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to smash that like button, guys. If you're not already subscribed, feel free to subscribe to the channel as well. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.